I call this meeting in the order and, and welcome to the September 5th uh, in City Council informational meeting. Seems like it's been quite a while since we've had a meeting, so welcome my colleagues back and uh, it's good to see everybody. Uh, also, I hope everybody had a good Labor Day weekend and you're all back refreshed. First item on uh, our agenda is City Council open business. Councilor Rolfing. Thank you. I just wanted to report, uh, it wasn't on the agenda, but I wanted to report that we did have a UDC meeting, uh, Urbanized Development Commission meeting on the uh, 10th of August. Um, the main thing we did was finalize the um, uh, Transportation Improvement Program TIP, it's called affectionately. And um, this is what it ends up being. Looks like this. It has all the projects for the next four years summary that are planned in, in the metropolitan area um, met, yeah, of Sioux Falls. And then um, this is the map of the things. If anybody wants to look at this, I'm happy to have it up here so you know what's, uh, what's on the agenda for the next uh, four years. It's really interesting of what's, uh, what's happening. Then we, uh, we also discussed the, um, the TIP situation uh, with um, state highway um, system with the Veterans Parkway um, going up from uh, Arrowhead, Arrow, yeah, Arrowhead Parkway up to Interstate 90, which is partially done. The city did the rest of it as the states. That's going to be a, um, a $66 million project, which is the largest project ever bid, ever let by the state um, for this kind of thing um, by the South Dakota Department of Transportation. So. Um, you know, cost was up about $6.9 million over what they projected, but uh, they're, they're doing it. It's going to get done, and so that's going to be a big uh, um, plus to the east side of Sioux Falls to allow people come in from Iowa and Minnesota and uh, get to shopping and entertainment and food, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, four years, guys, we should have it done, that part of it. But I do keep reminding them, though, that they have another part that isn't completed, on the south end, so um, we uh, will keep after them and get that done also. So, thank you, Councillor Rolfing. There is an awful lot that's going to be taking place in the next uh, four years, and the I-229 corridor project is another one of those. And of course, a big part of that is the 26th Street uh, over the 229. Yep. Uh, also, 41st Street on Interstate 29, I think, is in during that time frame as well. Is it not? First time. On 29? 41st Street, yes. the d diverging yep. diamond, the which diverging, will be exciting, first diamond. of its kind yep. in the state of South Dakota. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Any other comments for open discussion? Okay, seeing none, then we will move on to our first presentation, uh, quarterly city administration building update by Sue Kwan Beck Etten, uh, Director of Community or of S Central Services. Welcome, Sue. Thank you. Good afternoon. Just to refresh you on a couple of milestone events that have taken place this year. January, we had our groundbreaking. And ever since then, we've been uh, working diligently to uh, get this building completed. We executed the GMP in April of this year. And then by November, our plan is to have the, build, the building fully enclosed. May 2018 is our substantially complete date for the building. And then by July, we hope to have Van Epps Park improvements substantially completed as well. Just got a couple of photographs here to show you. This is the view from Dakota Avenue. As you can see, a lot of steel has been erected, more to come of course, um, but also exterior framing has begun. The project is on schedule and within budget. All three floors have decking on the south side as you can see from this photograph and we're working on steel on the north end of the building right now. What you'll see next is exterior framing and brick, window installation, 
exterior framing and drywall, interior framing and drywall, and of course the Dakota Avenue Road Diet, which is in the works right now. Well, I should say we are planning to begin some tours of the site um, in October. So we'd like to invite you to come as well as city staff. Um, Henry Carlson will be conducting some tours. We'll uh, get with Jim David to arrange for some times for you to come and see it firsthand. Now I'm gonna train it, turn it over to Tracy Turbeck for uh, a financial update. Thank you, Jeffrey. Thank you, Sue, good afternoon. Uh, very briefly, uh, running through the project finances, the project budget remains at $21.9 million, so that has not changed at all. The, uh, you can see the uh, uh, expended to date, these are through the end of August. Uh, construction about $3.8 million, uh, just under 900000 on soft costs, so that totals about $4.7 million, which uh, in percentage terms, we've spent about 20% of the project budget with 80% uh, of the way yet to go. So that is really the, uh, uh, in a nutshell, the financial update on the project. Uh, we will be back uh, before the end of the year, we anticipate with our next update. So with that, I'll open it up for any questions and Sue and I will do our best to answer questions. All right, thank you very much. Councilor Neitzer. Understanding that it's only one part of the project cost, do you have the GMP handy, what that was? The GMP was uh, just under 17.7 .7 million. 17670000 Okay. Have you gotten far enough along with some of the bids that you, I don't know if you have, a, you must have a list of like alt ads, alternate ads, things like that, and whether you've had bids come in favorably where you've been able to already add things that you would, you know, like in the event center we had all those wish list items and you're able to upgrade things? Yeah, and throughout the process, I guess, we've as we've progressed into the project, we've been able to do that. I don't know. Aaron, can you or Sue, can one of you address any specifics? Yeah. A couple of alternates that were at the top of our wish list included the, just getting the second elevator installed right away so that we could use one of them more for a freight elevator, if you will, um, and the other one just for people. Um, so we, we included that. That's part of the GMP. And then the other um, was to get third floor restrooms taken care of because we will have a conference room up there. As you know, we're building the third floor shell, so we'd want to be able to utilize that space as much as we can until we build out the rest of it, so we did include the third floor restrooms. And that, that was my final question, was whether there was more you were doing in the third floor than just a simple shell, if it was going to be finished more, and it sounds like. Just for a conference room will be up there, and then we're finishing it to the extent that from the atrium, from if you look up, it'll look as though it's finished. It won't look unfinished from the inside just looking up. And of course, from the exterior, it'll appear to be finished with windows and you know, normal exterior and blinds. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Sue, I think I do have one, one question that just came up in this discussion. You, you, it's a good point, because the atrium does extend all the way up. Uh, when the third, floor is not going to be used, is there a way to enclose that atrium area so that uh, we don't have to heat it to the same degree as the rest of the building? Or uh, I know we have to heat it to a certain point, otherwise you have damage. Well, to the extent that we can, yes. So, I mean, the elevators, for example, are part of that that will end up framing the atrium, if you will. So from, from the inside, when you look up, it'll, it'll be you can't really see through to the unfinished area. So, and of course, we'll keep it chillier up there than the other two floors since it will be, for the most part, uninhabited. Okay. All right. Very good. Thank you. Seeing no further questions, we'll move on to our uh, next uh, presentation and our final presentation. And that is the Downtown Development Project, Uptown 2. Director Darren Ketchum. Director of Community Development and Brent O'Neill, Economic Development Manager, uh, have a presentation on this particular topic. Well, good afternoon, City Council. Darren Ketchum with Community Development. 
<clears throat> Thanks for uh, letting us have some of your time today to come in and talk about this exciting development in downtown Sioux Falls. Thank you. We've got a short presentation. Um, Erica Beck is here from Lloyd Companies that'll provide you a little more detail of the development, but wanted to provide this update today in advance of your consideration in the coming weeks of the first and second reading of this proposal. I uh, just wanted to take one minute before we get started. Dustin Powers from my office has just done a tremendous amount of work on this uh, project over the past few months and just wanted to publicly recognize and thank Dustin for, for his time and effort on this. Uh, it's just uh, been a ton of work and he's done extremely well, so thanks Dustin. <clears throat> so here's the process that we used as we started down this journey with the Uptown 2 development. We issued an RFP request for proposal early this spring. Um, following that RFP, we received five proposals from, uh, I'd say, largely local companies. There was one company from Chicago that did partner with a, a local firm. So we did start to get some more of that um, you know, regional um, exposure, starting to get interest from some of those larger markets, and we've seen that in some of our other development projects as well. Uh, following the proposals, we had the selection committee review those, and those were unanimously scored in favor of the Lloyd proposal. It was scored number one by all of the committee members, so very telling the strength of the proposal they put together. And, and I think from the images you've probably seen and some of the programming that's been shared with you, I think um, that story really uh, tells itself. So fantastic proposal and everyone on the committee thought so. So how did we get to where we're at today? Well, this summer we embarked on a, a number of rounds of negotiations from everything of what kind of is in that project list. You know, this obviously we're talking about tax increment financing as one of the tools of this project. And the law is somewhat broad in what you can incorporate into those. And so we started, I would tell you, with a bigger number before we got down to where we're at today, to where we feel um, the project still gets done, but in a cost-effective manner that uses the taxpayer dollars very prudently. So we're here now. Um, do an informational today. The Planning Commission will consider this tomorrow. As part of our process, we did offer to the school district and the Minnehaha County Commission uh, an opportunity to review this proposal and for us to present uh, at their meetings. And the Minnehaha County Commission invited us to their meeting and we went last week and gave them an overview of the project with the team from Lloyd Companies. And uh, I would just share that I feel the proposal went very well and I think there was um, um, some genuine support amongst the commission. I don't feel like we had any negative feedback uh, in terms of what was presented, but certainly I would offer if you do have questions of how some of those folks feel that I'm sure they would be free to tell you as well. So here's the proposal. And what we're looking at right here is building A. This would be the actual building that's built on the city-owned property. Uh, it's a mixed-use building with some commercial use and uh, a lot of residential use. We'd be looking in that 18 to 20,000 square feet of commercial space and upwards of, uh, in this building, over 100 apartments. And I'm sure Erica will share more details about the exciting amenities that they have. One of the things we really enjoyed about this project was the density that it brings to downtown. You know, parking is one of those things that really can limit some of the growth we see in downtown. And Lloyd Company's proposal was unique in the way that it sought to completely um, excavate the area, provide 260 underground spaces, so the people that live and work in this development will not be relying on the city streets or infrastructure to, uh, to park their cars. Uh, rather, they'll be in underground parking. Uh, but what it does also is provide some parking that's desperately needed on the streets up there, especially in light of some of the additional development we've had. You know, the Levitt Shell will gain some additional on-street parking up in that Falls Park West area, uh, as would Main and Second. On top of it, this is a $43.5 million investment. I think that's something that, uh, that we don't see all too often. And I think it speaks volumes for the investment Lloyd Companies has made in Sioux Falls over the decades. And this will truly be uh, a 
destination uh, for folks when they come to Sioux Falls, when they're looking for that place to live. You know, you feel that connection to Falls Park, that connection to downtown, that those amenities, whether it's a restaurant or a coffee shop or whether it's your office that gets located here. This is truly one of those iconic type uh, investments that will be in our downtown for generations. Here's how the site lays out. Uh, you can see there's a building A and a building B. Uh, we'd be looking for the uh, building B is completely on privately owned property. The city does not own or control that property. Uh, a is the property the city has. Um, all of this is really part of what used to be the old Pitts um, salvage yard, if you remember back, back in those days. So it hasn't had maybe the, the greatest history of uh, maybe environmental stewardship or, or uh, maybe other things over the years, but this certainly seeks to take and, and reclaim that property, get rid of some of the blighted structures, get rid of some of that contamination, the, that lead contamination, the petroleum that's uh, in the soil, and some other volatile organic compounds, all of which we feel are capable of being cleaned up and developing this into a safe, uh, livable, uh, workable area. Here's the description. I won't talk a lot about this because I feel like Erica will probably just ask if you have any questions of her if I get into this too deep. But uh, here's some of the exciting statistics that we look at. You know, five-story building overlooking beautiful Falls Park West. It's not just uh, you know a surface parking lot haven. It's got some great use of the remaining outdoor space. It's got green space built into it. Um, some great amenities that truly make it a destination for downtown residents and uh, patrons. So beyond the TIF, there's some other items that we'll be asking the City Council to consider, and one of those is the sales agreement. When we look at the sales agreement, you know, we're, uh, we don't have a lot of options when we sell land as a government entity. You know, we can do a sealed bids, we can do an auction, or we can get an appraisal and then sell it uh, for the appraised value or down to as low as 90%. The deal that we'll present to you has the sales agreement with the full appraised value uh, at $875,000. And that appraisal was completed this summer by a local firm, Elwood & Martin. The other things we look at when we do these sales agreements and these development agreements is making sure that we can hold, um, hold individuals accountable to do what they say they're going to do. So in this case, our sales agreement uh, has identified that building A has to commence construction by June 1st, has to complete construction by November 1st of 2019, so a little more than a year to undertake this first building. Uh, if that doesn't happen, the city has an option for a pre-negotiated price to repurchase that property and put it back into the city's inventory. Our intention isn't to put this valuable property out there and then have it land banked. And so we do put some significant uh, clauses in there that would allow us to, to take that property if the agreement isn't being met. Um, one of the things that we'll obviously be talking more about uh, in the future is tax increment financing. Uh, currently, the properties within this tax increment district pay about $8,000 a year in taxes. Following the completion of this exciting development, we estimate that taxes will be at over $455,000 a year. That's $455,000 new dollars for local governments once the tax increment uh, financing is paid for, which we think will be a little over 13 years. What is the TIF being used for? Certainly we look at the need, but then we look at the use. Uh, we're not paying for underground parking. We're not paying for somebody's office space. We're not paying for somebody's apartment. This is truly to go for uh, items that benefit the public. When we look at cleaning up blighted areas, several million dollars to go towards the environmental remediation. Um, you know, there's, there's some funds in there to go to put Second Street back together and then also to ensure that we increase some of the on-street parking in the area. Uh, I think there's currently about 15 to 20 on-street spaces in this area and that will go over 100 following completion of this project. So those are the main focuses of the tax increment financing. 
But again, we'll provide uh, greater detail as we move forward in the coming weeks. So that's the, the kind of the quick update that I wanted to share. I know that there may be some questions and uh, certainly stand by to answer those questions. Otherwise, I know Erica from Lloyd Companies also has some items that she'd like to share with you about this exciting project. Okay, very, very good. Any uh, questions for Director Ketchum at this point in time? Councillor Staley. Um, we met with uh, Erica Beck a few weeks ago, and the, the number, um, the dollar amount for this TIF seems to be changing, because uh, Erica in, just mentioned $484,000 when we met with her, and now you have on here, four hundred. at the end it's going to be $455,000 of property tax, correct? Yeah. The when it's the so what, what I wanted to know is, for the 13 and a half to 14 years, what is that number going to be per year? Well, certainly we, we get as close as we can, but this is an estimate based on where working with the county, we feel it'll be assessed at. And working with them, we've, de we've estimated 455000 per year, certainly subject to the final valuation and assessment by the county. So 484000 would not be a correct number to be using? The number that we put in the TIF plan was 455000 that the Planning Commission will take up. And are the other five um, development companies, is that public information as to who those were? Sure. Do you, you want to know who they are? Yes. Oh, uh, JDI, which is a uh, development arm of Robin Miller from Miller MSH Architects, um, Legacy Developments, Signature Companies, obviously Lloyd Companies, and then the last one was Affordable Housing Solutions that partnered with uh, Bryn Shore Developments out of Chicago. And uh, who was on the uh, RFP committee? Uh, it was myself, uh, Tracy Turback, Mike Cooper, uh, Councillor Erickson, and Dustin Powers from my office. And we had consultation from Don Kearney in the Parks Department. Would you give us a brief discussion about the history of this land? I was talking with Brett O'Neill earlier today of how the city acquired the land that this will be built on. Yeah, and you know, like I said, it was an old salvage yard that uh, used to have tracks running through that, that direction as well. The city purchased that land um, for, I want to say, $4.50. Um, I, I don't have the year off the top of my head, but more than a decade ago. Um, $4.50. I'm sorry, $4.50 a square foot. Uh, this would be, when we sell this to, to Lloyd Companies, they would be paying $11.50 a square foot. Um, so, I mean, that's the history. So we've owned it for, Brett thought it was about 15 years. Yeah, more than a decade. I mean, it was kind of part of that Phillips to the Falls vision was to get that old uh, scrap yard out of there and create the Falls Park West and, and complete the Phillips to the Falls investment. And just on a side note, you did mention parking, but I, we were, I just wanted to ask you about the mixed-use parking ramp since you're up here. Yeah. We were, I was anticipating that was going to be part of our conversation this month. Mm -hmm. What's the time frame on that now? Well, we're still working to finalize the agreements that have to be made. There's um, about eight, to ten, eight different agreements with multiple parties that are signatures to that. And there's portions of one agreement that have to be inserted into other agreements and have additional parties agree to. So uh, it's just a little slower when you have to synchronize and coordinate that many moving pieces. But uh, our intention is to bring the council a complete uh, package for your consideration. And we don't want to bring you a piecemeal uh, deal. So when would that be? Uh, as soon as we get the documents ready, we're not going to... October. We're not going to bring you something and talk about something that we don't have a signed agreement. So as soon as we get those agreements signed, we'll schedule time to bring that to the council. So it could be October? Could be, yes. November? Could be. As soon as we get them signed and we can schedule it with the council, we'll, we'll bring it forward. But not this month? I don't anticipate having them signed this month. Okay. And, and I'm only asking yep. because it, Matt Nelson was very adamant to me during the budget hearings that this was going to be coming up today and that we were gonna be having a second reading on the 18th. Okay. And we weren't notified at all that this had been changed. Okay. Okay, I can address that 
to a degree because it was not placed on this agenda ever at any point in time. I understand. So it wasn't officially on the agenda. I but think it, that it was, was on the calendar. Matt Nelson told point. me it was on the calendar. I believe so. that was probably tentative. Any other questions for Director Ketchum? Councilor Erpenbach. Can we talk a little more in depth about um, what the environmental blight removal, what, what does that mean? I mean, I, I know we've talked salvage yard and not, not mm -hmm. everyone that listens to us or watches us has been around as long as some of mm -hmm. us. And so can you talk about that a little bit? And then I have a, um, a follow-up question to yes, that. So when we talk about the environmental and the blight, uh, we've had consultants with geotech and, and consulting with the State Department of Environment and Natural Resources do some site survey work and they've identified in some of the places up to 20 feet deep or greater where there's petroleum products that have penetrated the site, uh, heavy metals, lead, and other volatile organic compounds. And so all of those items have to be removed before we can put anything developable there. And so that isn't as simple as bringing in uh, an excavator and just loading up dump trucks. The process actually includes, I would say, sowing in some other carbon materials into the soil to neutralize some of those chemicals. And then once it's neutralized, um, bringing it and disposing of it in the landfill. And you can't just do that 10 feet at a time. It's about two feet maximum where they'll sow in this material, uh, let it cure, remove it, then you add additional material, let it cure, remove it. And so it, uh, it's a fairly labor intensive process and expensive because a lot of times in these developments you can maybe reuse some of that dirt rather than haul it to the landfill. So it just adds a, a little different complexity to this versus other development. Right, so it's, I mean, it's a mess, obviously. It's a mess. Yes. And, and so, I mean, I guess it would be interesting to us as we maybe talk through this going forward that we kind of understand, I mean, that process is fairly new from, my, from just the little bit that mm -hmm. I've researched it. Um, it might be something to learn just a little bit more about, not only as a council, but as citizens, mm -hmm. that this is not a normal project for us. It is kind of, oh, geez, I was going to say breaking new ground, sorry. Mm -hmm. But um, it, is, it is that, it's something that we really need to understand. And then I guess my follow-up question to it then is, is to talk, Darren, just kind of at a high level about how that TIF is going to, how that tax increment financing process is going to help make that piece happen for this project. Well, certainly the, the funding, you know, this is uh, millions of dollars that they wouldn't typically have in a development. And so that tax increment financing will provide them that stability to go out and get an additional bank loan. So they'll use that bank loan to pay for those additional costs uh, to, to correct the soils, remove the blight, and pay for the infrastructure. Um, things that aren't typical in a development. Let's say if we're doing a greenfield site at 85th in Minnesota or, or somewhere where you don't have some of that contamination and those extraordinary development costs that you do on this type of site. Those dollars come in and kind of bridge that gap um, and get something that without these dollars, we would not have this project. Um, okay. I think that's the key to this conversation is that without doing this TIF, that, that this kind of project doesn't happen in this state without this kind of financing. And so that's critical not for the, only for this council to understand, but for citizens and for the legislature to understand as well. Projects of this magnitude don't under, don't happen in South Dakota without TIF. My third question, then, Mr. Chair, if I might, is just just kind of a stupid one. But would you look at the the drawing of the the ta the district always has weird little dog legs. Every district we've mm -hmm. ever done. But why does this one have that one that's in the street? Can you explain that, or that's, is it just random? Well, no, that's not, that's intentional. That goes out there so we can actually use some of those tax increment dollars to put in the diagonal parking in that on the right of way there where I said earlier there's like 20 parking spaces on the roads in that area, and we'll be over 100 through these improvements. If we don't draw the district appropriately, we can't spend the district money outside of the district, so that's why you'll see that. Cool, good, thank you. One other comment, Councillor, to, to your point about the, the TIF, and we did engage a third-party public finance uh, firm out of Minnesota on this project to verify all the numbers, and their assessment was that without TIF, in this case, this development would not occur. Thank you. Very good. Councillor Neitzer. 
Rela related to that, I'm guessing the church doesn't pay property tax anyway, but why is the church wrapped in the boundary? Um, some of that so we can do some of that diagonal parking. And if there was ever a, a, a transaction where um, facade, for some reason, would be part of it, we could have that available, but it's not part of the plan today, but it's really for the parking piece. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Councilor Erickson. I think what's important to note, too, is that they're, um, they're willing to do the additional parking on that North Phillips as well on the other side of the street because that wasn't part of, part of what was going to happen. And through negotiation and talking mm -hmm. about this, um, that's additional parking that will be done as well. Um, and as the Levitt Shell is prepared, that only helps the whole development along the way, and especially for that commercial, um, the commercial property having those additional parking spots and not having to go in and be under construction a couple years afterwards is important. And so I think that's a benefit as well. And, you know, I did sit on the RFP process and, and got to see um, all of the projects and each one had great merits and had great um, things about them. Um, but this one just stood out. And, and as um, director stated that it was unanimous and that um, this project did pull in that other blighted area. And so we're getting so much more than we asked, to mm -hmm. be honest. Um, they went above and beyond and um, acquired that um, additional property, yes, for their benefit and for their business. However, it's a, a blighted area that is, is now going towards that main avenue. Um, and it's just going to make that area that much better and that much stronger. And if we can get a developer to um, take the risk, because mm -hmm. the TIF is the risk on that developer, it's not on the citizens, it's on, on that developer, we're not bonding for it. Um, that's important mm -hmm. to know that we're getting a, a huge environmental cost cleaned up. I mean, why wouldn't we wanna get that cleaned mm -hmm. up? Um, and get that land back in the shape that it should be um, for the standards here today. So um, I, I think that this is a, an amazing project and a, a great plan and uh, look forward to the completion of it. Thank you. Councillor Staley. Now, uh, Darren, uh, tell us about these other companies. My understanding is that some of them were w wanting to do the deal without the TIF. You know, Councillor, I think it's been a matter of our uh, policy to not discuss details of proposals that haven't been submitted, or I'm sorry, that haven't been selected. You know, this is the project that's been selected, and we've typically... I, I understand, but we're just hearing, I mean, I just for the record, we're, we're hearing that this could not be done without a TIF, and I understand from conversations I've had within your office that there were other companies that were willing to do this without a TIF. Counselor, there were proposals that we reviewed that sought to redevelop this property, to maybe um, a quarter to a fifth of the scale and density that was a underutilization of this uh, limited land that we have available in downtown. So it, it definitely is not an apples to apples comparison. There was no other developer that proposed to spend $43 million in downtown Sioux Falls. Uh, frankly, I don't believe there was any that were willing to spend half that. Okay. Any other questions for Director Ketchum? Just, just a couple of points that I'd like to make the, to wrap this up. Uh, I just want to place the uh, yep. Councilor Rolfing has requested that if uh, anybody from the Lloyd Company would like to speak at this point, you'd have the opportunity. You do not have to. It's up to you. Looks if to there's on. additional detail that you would like from Lloyd, I know that they're able to address that. Um, sure. I was... Did you have anything you wanted to add, Erica, at this point? Okay, very good. Thank you, Councillor Rolfing. That's okay. Um, I just wanted to bring out again, and, and uh, Councillor Erfenbach and uh, Erickson have touched on it, and uh, Director Ketchum, you did. The current property taxes, 8,291. Upon completion, 455,000 estimate. Mm -hmm. We can agree that's an estimate. What we can agree on is going to be considerably, considerably higher than what it is today. And as Councillor Erickson had stated too, the risk is not on the city. The TIF is, is there so that we have the remediation of a blighted area. To me, this is picture perfect mm -hmm. for a TIF. And I do recall the salvage yard. Mm -hmm. I recall when much of the property to the north was actually city dump land. It's unbelievable 
that it was used for that purpose, but that's what it, that's what it is. That's what it was at that time. Um, so there's a lot of a remediation, and it is, as Councillor Erpenbach had stated, it is very complex in, in doing that and expensive. Uh, through that, that process, in addition to the properties on Main Avenue having their own set of issues along with the city property. Um, so we get the elimination of, of, the, of the blighted area, and by the way, to expand more on the risk, what that means is if the Lloyd companies now find out that they've underestimated, that it's gonna be more complicated than what they had felt, that's on them. Correct. It's not on us as a city, correct? Correct. So they are assuming that risk. Um, and in addition to the removal of the blight, we're having uh, second street reconstruction uh, and we're getting on street public. And I'm gonna emphasize mm -hmm. public parking. So the TIF is for the remediation, it's for the reconstruction of the avenues and, and the second street and for the public parking. Again, it is not going to somebody's underground parking or to their apartment. Okay. It's, it's going to what the, how the city actually benefits. So I just wanted to really place a point of emphasis, emphasis on that. And, uh, you know, once the TIF is paid off, I mean, and that is, that TIF money, that $455,000 is still tax money that's going mm -hmm. to all of this. That otherwise, the city of Sioux Falls would have to undertake that project ourselves. If not somebody else is just gonna graciously come along and say we're gonna clean this property up. Mm -hmm. So that money is being applied for that purpose. Yes, sir. So uh, it is, and I, and I do appreciate, the last thing I just wanted to mention is I do appreciate the fact that a third party was uh, mm -hmm. employed to evaluate this, this project. So good job. Councillor Neisser, I see you've got something else you'd like to state. Yeah, I just want to say I can concur with everything the chair said, but I think something that hasn't maybe been um, uh, talked about enough, and I just kind of made this realization as I was reflecting on it, looking at it this weekend, is look at how well maximized this property is. There's almost no surface parking on site. Mm -hmm. I mean, in, in the little bit that there is, the only impervious surface, it's more, it's more or less hidden. I mean to put, you know, the last thing you want in your streetscape is surface parking lots downtown. And they're putting 200 and some spaces underground. That is a big, big deal. And I, I think that is something that, that we should appreciate that they're doing. And it's, it's a, a big value add in a project like this. They could have not done that. And I, I, I really appreciate that. Good point, Councillor. And uh, that was another point I was gonna make. Yes, there were five proposals, but it was a unanimous pick. And I, and I thank Councillor Erickson and everybody else that served on that RFP process for the work that you've done. And we look forward to the next step in this process. Councillor, as, as you know and others know and I think can appreciate, when we work through projects and we consider tax increment financing, this is the farthest thing from a gimme in Sioux Falls. And I think uh, there's people in this room that would probably tell you that um, it's not an easy process. You know, we, we scrutinize every single one of these. We are looking to why it's needed. We're looking at what it's going towards, and, and we're just pushing and making uh, people validate that every step of the way. Uh, this $4.1 million ceiling is exactly that. It's a ceiling. If there's additional risk beyond that 4.1, you've accurately said it. It is on the developer. At the same time, um, w this is taking care of something that in the long run would probably end up in the city's bucket. And so it, the, the best time to take care of a problem is today. And I do appreciate the fact that you consulted with the school district uh, as, mm. as well as Minnehaha County Commission as well. So very good. Thank you very much. We look forward to the next step. Mr. Mr. Chair. I think we're done with this I would topic. like to be able to comment one more time. Well, I'd asked earlier, Councillor. Uh, if there was anything else and, you and I've to heard say. the discussion. I have something you All like, right, Councilor. make it quick, please. Well, no, I wanted to ask Erica Beck if you'd come up, please. And, and I, I want to say that it, it seems to me that right now we're kind of uh, having a discussion that this is a done deal. This we're going full force ahead. So for me to have, I don't res think we've had any kind for of me a to vote. have reservations, you have a question, Councilor. Let's 
What you, you're a, able to make comments. It, I think I should be able to make comments counselor, as well. Counselor, you were given that opportunity. If you got a question, ask it now, or this meeting will be adjourned. I, I have. Ask your question, please. Is 100% of this TIF money going to go to the re remediation of the soil? No, not at 100%. What, okay, so what else is it going to be used for? Yep, if you would just give me one second, I will um, go through that a little bit in more detail. So we have requested uh, and agreed upon a TIF of $4.1 million. That includes demolition of the existing buildings along Main Avenue. Um, the remediation also includes asbestos removal in those buildings, along with, as Darren said, um, haul away of the contaminated soil, uh, all the excavation associated with that contaminated soil, um, any sort of rock blasting that goes along with that contaminated soil removal as well, uh, utility work on the site, and then also, as uh, Director Ketchum stated, improvements to Phillips Avenue and Main Avenue, so parking along both sides of the street within that boundary, and then also complete reconstruction of 2nd Street, including all the streetscaping work and angled parking as well. And then there's a, an additional um, 270,000 associated with architectural and engineering fees for those public improvements, and then any legal costs associated with the TIF. And you, how much did you originally ask for for the TIF? Where we started? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so what we did initially, uh, Councilwoman Staley, is identified all of the different types of improvements within the project that under state statute would be eligible for mm -hmm. improvement or reimbursement, excuse me. And then city staff worked with us to identify which of those eligible improvements they would be comfortable with um, reimbursing through this project. So I think we got down to maybe just over $5 million initially, and then we're scaled back even further to 4.1. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, yep. Ms. Beck. All right, that concludes uh, this informational.